Hello and thank you for watching this informational video sponsored by I Can Help. In this tutorial we will be illustrating how to create a software RAID in Mac OS X. To start, we need two or more hard drives. These drives can be of the same or different sizes, but if you are creating a mirrored RAID it is best to have two drives of the same capacity and speed, with similar internal cache sizes. A mirrored RAID will not give you additional space above the size of the smallest hard drive in the RAID set, but will provide you with data redundancy in case of drive failure, thereby reducing downtime. Please note that a RAID is not a substitute for, or a replacement of a backup of your data. Changes made to a RAID happen on both drives at the same time. Thusly, if an error occurs it will affect both drives and can result in loss of data on both physical drives. Having an up-to-date backup is the only way to ensure data integrity in the long term. To begin, plug both drives into your Mac. These drives can be plugged into USB, Firewire or Thunderbolt ports or can be internal hard drives installed in a Mac Pro prior to the late 2013 model. Once you have attached your hard drives to your Mac, open the app called Disk Utility which is inside the Applications folder, then the Utilities folder. In the Disk Utility window you will see the two physical drives we will be using to create the RAID. In this tutorial we will be using two 1 terabyte drives. You will notice that each physical drive is designated by an identifier that says 1 terabyte ST followed by additional numbers. Below this identifier are the names of each formatted volume on these physical drives. In this case we have HD1 and HD2. These drives were formatted and tested prior to creating this RAID. Performing a sector scan or burn in test with new drives is a good idea to ensure they are physically functional before deploying them into a RAID. Please note that any data on either of these drives will be erased during this process. Please back up any and all data on these drives if you are reusing previously used drives. To begin, click on one of the physical drive identifiers in the left hand column of disk utility. Once selected, five tabs will appear in the right hand column at the top. Click on the RAID tab. In this tab we will set the name of the RAID set, its format, and what type of RAID we want to create. There are three types of RAIDs supported by Mac OS X. The first and probably most commonly used is Mirrored RAID Set. This type of RAID creates two drives with a full set of data on each drive. This is used for redundancy and limits downtime as stated above. In this scenario, if one drive fails, the RAID will continue operating without interruption until the fail drive can be replaced. In a Mirrored RAID Set, R2, 1TB drives will have a total capacity of 1 terabyte. The second type of RAID is a Stripe RAID set. This type of RAID is used to increase bandwidth to your drives, thereby increase speed at which the data on your RAID can be read or written. In this type of RAID R2, 1TB drives would have a capacity of 2 terabytes and be very fast. Please note that this type of RAID offers zero data redundancy. If one drive fails, all data will be lost. The third and most simple type of RAID is a concatenated disk set or sometimes called JBOD, which stands for just a bunch of disks. This type of RAID is used to create a large capacity volume of two, or often more disks. Similar to a Stripe RAID set, this type gives you a larger capacity but does not offer the increased speed of the Stripe set. However, in a concatenated disk set all data for most files are stored on one physical volume, thusly, if one of the physical drives fails it would be possible to pull data off of the other set members with the help of other data recovery software. This is once again no substitute for data backup. The advantage of a concatenated disk set is the ability to turn 4, 6 terabytes drives into one very large 24 terabytes volume in cases where capacity is more important than redundancy. In this case we will be creating a mirrored RAID set. I will first name my RAID set SG1 terabyte mirror. This can be anything you wish but should be somewhat descriptive of the drives that make up the RAID set. In the case of a Mac Pro where you might have four internal drives, you may want to name the RAID set drive bays 1 and 2, 
or drive bays 3 and 4. That way, in case of failure, you know immediately which physical drives are being affected. Now that we have a name we will select our format. Today we are using Mac OS Extended, Journaled. There is an option to use a case-sensitive volume, but I highly recommend not using case-sensitive unless you absolutely must. It will lead to problems moving data to other volumes that are typically formatted without case sensitive capabilities. I now select my mirror raid set option. At this point we have to add the physical drives we want to be part of our raid set. The easiest way to do this is simply drag and drop each of the physical drive identifiers in the left hand column to the list of raid members in the lower right hand column. Once you have both members added to the RAID set you can simply click the Create button to create your RAID set. There is an Option button available opposite of the Create button. But I recommend not changing anything in this area unless you know exactly what you are doing with those options. Once you have clicked the Create button, Disk Utility will warn you once again that all data on HD1 and HD2 is going to be deleted. To confirm and proceed with the RAID creation click the Create button in the drop-down sheet. Your newly created RAID will mount shortly and be ready for use. You can check on the health of your RAID in Disk Utility and see which RAID slices are online. If your RAID indicates that it is operating in a degraded mode, you likely have one drive that has failed. If this is the case please see our other tutorial called How to Replace a Failed Disk in a Mirrored RAID Set. Once again, Please back up all data on any and all volumes, regardless as to whether they are a RAID or a standard single disk volume. Thank you for viewing this tutorial. If you have any additional questions please let us know. Once again, this tutorial was sponsored and produced by I Can Help. Have a great day.